Hey folks, welcome back to our Dice Tower Preview. I'm Mark, and today we're taking a look at Safari Turbo. Safari Turbo is brought to you by TerranCon Board Games. It's for two to five players, ages 14 and up, and games range anywhere from 60 to 180 minutes. You have been chosen to participate in a car race on a hidden magical island. The island has transformed you into a specific character with unique powers and abilities. You must use them to help you win the race. And so the object of the game is to be the first player across the finish line. During a player's turn, you can play any of your character's powers and abilities. And then you roll the high speed die to move your vehicle down the road. However, during certain times, you will be stuck with the low speed die, which will dramatically slow your progress. And you will be collecting game cards and coins along the way. You must traverse difficult terrain and battle hostile animals as well as other players. There are different types of areas on the board that present unique challenges, such as the Quicksand, Gator Lake, Wild Beast Canyon, Rickety Bridge, Andy Straightaway Ice Road, and you'll have to find your way out of the Terran Volcano. And so the game ends when the first player crosses the finish line, the next closest player is declared second place, and so on. There are five different characters in this base game. Each player will be dealt one randomly, or you can select however you see fit. Now, these characters have vastly different powers and abilities, and there's some a little bit of take that here as well. There's even one character that teleports others around the board. So, that's a pretty interesting thing. As you play this game multiple times, you'll see that these characters really can aid and change up how you play the game. Now, there is this really neat dashboard as well. All the components in this game are definitely an upgraded quality. So this dashboard gives you a health meter and a damage meter for your vehicle, as well as you have high powered binoculars. These binoculars have three charges on them though, and they allow you to look down the road hopefully avoiding any jungle creatures that you might run into. And then you have a guardian card. And this is interesting because it can augment your character's abilities. As you run into guardians, they're gonna teach you lessons throughout the game and you'll be able to level this up. Now you have to run into at least three different guardians before you get the base level of this, but it really is another interesting aspect to augmenting your character. And of course, each of these characters, again, like I said, have unique abilities and powers. So you'll take their appropriate tokens and cards and they're all gonna have very different ones. And you'll really want to explore the different facets of these different uh, characters because they really do have amazing, crazy powers. And each player has their own color-coded vehicle with the appropriate symbol that matches their character as well. These will be placed at the start location of the race, as you would expect and there is a compass. This compass is pretty powerful actually. So the player that uh, basically rolls last is gonna start with the compass and the compass will allow you to take shortcuts. And you can steal the compass from people if you land on the compass symbol. If you follow one of the shortcuts, then you will lose the compass. Well, potentially, you'll go through the shortcut and then there'll be a roll off around the table to see who gets the compass next and all the other players will be rolling the high speed dice. However, the compass owner rolls the low speed. And if there's ties, you do a roll off. But the thing here is that the compass is super powerful and really helps you avoid some of those longer areas of the board, but it will change hands quite frequently. And there's a whole series of cards that you're gonna set up next to the board. These cards are gonna come in really handy as you go through this race. There's cards that give you plus one rolls, allow you to do, have do-overs and go again as more turbo options. There's even water cards that will help you more safely traverse the volcano. There's some dice that you're gonna be using throughout the game, specifically the volcano dice, as well as the golden tree dice, all of which you're gonna be using when you get to the specific areas on the board. And then there's the trading post. Trading post is gonna allow you to buy cards, buy special items. So you'll keep that all next to the board handy for all players, as well as some additional tokens and things. But then you're pretty much ready to start the race. So on your turn, you'll take the high speed dice, you'll roll it and move your vehicle down the road. Yes, 
this is a roll and move. So it does harken back to those old school roll and move games. However, this game has so much more going on. You know, you have cards that are gonna augment all your dice rolls or allow you to go again or just add again value to the dice. And there's different cards that are gonna allow you to do re-rolls, things like that, as well as turbo boosts down the road. Now those cards are acquired in multiple ways. There's spots on the board that correlate to the card and there's the golden tree. So the golden tree is gonna allow you to roll dice to gain cards. So if you roll two different symbols of these dice, then you get to pick one of those two cards. If you roll two symbols of the same, then you get two cards of that type. And there's also the golden leaf. Golden leaf acts as a wild, you can pick whatever you want then. Or if you roll two golden leaves, that's when things get interesting. Then you look at the back of the trading post card and there are special gifts that you can receive. You get to pick one of these. They're gonna usually give you multiple cards or basically allow you to steal the golden compass. So it's something to be sought after for sure. And as you go across the board, there's other golden tree spots. Actually, these are leaves on the board, but you have to land exactly on those in order to roll the dice. The tree though, you can just stop and use those dice and roll. And of course, there's all kinds of hazards that you're gonna be running into. You'll see that they're marked by a red circle with a symbol, well not a symbol, but a number and a letter. So on the board is also a handy guide to show you what different penalties you're gonna receive when you land on those spots. You could take damage to your health or damage to your vehicle. You could lose turns or you might even have to flip over cards, which is interesting here is that if you do flip over cards, they become ghosted, so to say. And if you roll a four on your turn, then you have the option of flipping it back over for use. So that's also handy, but the cards are really valuable, so you don't want to lose those. So looking out for these spots, using your plus one cards where appropriate when you need them is very valuable. Now there's also areas of the board that you have to traverse and be very careful about, like the rickety bridge. And that might be another place that you save those plus one cards for so you don't get put back uh, and lose all your progress. And of course, you're gonna be fighting, potentially fighting, different types of animals out in this jungle. And those animals will have a, a purple circle with a number in it. You'll have to roll against that and see if you can win that contest of strength. Now luckily there are lion cards that you can acquire also out on this board and at the trading post. Uh, but these will allow you to potentially win those battles. You have to either roll, well not either, you have to roll at least one higher value than the animal that you are attacking or battling against, I should say, in order to win that contest. And if you don't, usually there's multiple things that are gonna go wrong. You're gonna have three penalties in a lot of cases. And then there's other things that happen like with the alligators that can push you off into the water, make you lose some traction and so forth. So penalties are really bad. And another thing that you're gonna be acquiring on this board is as you move across it is gold or money and you wanna get some of that, well, at least as much as possible, so you, when you get to the trading post, you can go spend it on getting more cards and special items. So there are definitely rules for acquiring those and so forth, and what's interesting here is that there's tons of different things going on in this game. So how you approach those different areas and using your cards to land on the specific spots that you want is really helpful. Also, you have turbo. So if you roll a six, which is your turbo, you can use your turbo card and get to go again, basically. But in an area like here where the wild beasts are, oh man, you have to be very quiet. If you roll a six there, they're going to rush you and push you back to the safe zone. There are safe zones as well, which is important to note, uh, that will protect you and specifically against your fellow players, things like that. And you can be knocked out, which isn't horrible. Being knocked out just kind of delays your movement on the board. and if your car or your vehicle is completely damaged, it is a magical island after all, it will self-repair, but it will take you several rounds to do so, which you'll have to be rolling the slow speed dice. So as you get towards the end of the race, there is this volcano that you're gonna have to deal with. And at the volcano center, you have to traverse that somehow, but you're gonna have to roll dice in order to do that. There's four volcano dice. Now, one of the big things to look out for is there's a negative one health that you could potentially roll. If you have a water card, then you can negate that. But if you don't, then you're gonna have to take negative one health. 
but you get to roll three times and you can choose as many dice as you want to re-roll and so forth, but you're either looking for three check marks that moves you past the volcano to the next spot, or you're looking for four of the same letter that will move you to that spot as well. However, if you spell out the word cave, you will get to move to the secret cave, found your way past some of these lava fields. Also, if you land on a lava field, it's gonna put you back, unless you have a water card that allows you to stay there. So lots of hazards in this volcano area, for sure. Interesting thing is that if you do roll four of the same letter, then you're also going to be able to pick a card, which is really nice as well. So this last bit, this last kind of race for the finish road, is definitely going to be very dangerous. So you've made it past the volcano. You're on the final stretch. This last road is called Andy's Straightaway. However, it is fully covered in ice. So for every movement you make it along this road, you're gonna have to back up two spaces. It is so slick. And of course, then whoever makes it to the finish line is going to win the race. All right, folks, just a reminder once again, this has been a Dice Tower paid preview. And everything you've seen here is done and published. This is the base game that is available now. However, they are releasing the expansion pack for it. As you expect, there's even more characters to choose from with more crazy abilities, as well as new specialty items, things like that. So keep an eye out for that if you like this type of game. Now, as far as this type of game goes, it is your standard roll and move, but like I said, all kinds of zany things are gonna happen. You know, it's interesting because one of the things that actually reminds me of is the old, one of the old Star Trek episodes uh, where they played a game called Fizzbin and Kirk is like, you know, the second card is turned up except on Tuesday. And I feel like this game has a lot of that zaniness built into it. A lot of back and forth, especially between you and the other players and dealing with the different types of animals out in this forest. But you know, the component quality is really nice. And you know, if this looks like something of interest to you, I'm sure they would appreciate your support. So I think that's it for me. And until next time, we'll see you at the table.